and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Kalashnikov and uh, well, this is the first time I've uploaded in quite a while. Uh, you know, lately I've been really enjoying watching time lapses of people painting. I find that very relaxing and I figured that we could do something like that where I get to show you what, you know, what I've been up to, what I've been creating and stuff. But also, uh, I could lay that nicely uh, with a voiceover of me talking about some theoretical stuff that has something to do with the um, painting or the design I'm working on. So today, as you can see, we're going to be working on a textile pattern. And uh, this is heavily inspired by William Morris, um, the profile movement, but in particular the arts and craft, crafts uh, movement of the late 19th century in England. And so what this is going to be about, essentially, you're going to be able to see how I work my way through creating a pattern and um, a tiled pattern, actually. But it's also I'm going to be speaking to you about some theoretical concepts that I, I really enjoy. So first of all, let's talk a bit about William Morris and uh, who is William Morris, I guess would be a nice start. William Morris, uh, he's one of these artists that has inspired me the most. He was born in the uh, 1800s, in 1834 and died in 1896. And he was essentially a textile designer, but he was also a poet, you know, Novelist, translator, and also a socialist activist. Um, he is thought to be more or less the one of the thinking heads of the arts and crafts movement in here in in Britain. And um, I find that it's very interesting how deeply his work is connected with um, ornamentalism. And I think there's a very interesting connection to be made there between workers' rights and the whole movement for workers' rights, so essentially socialism, um, and ornamentalism. Because you have to realize that at this point in England, we'd be speaking about the 1850s to the 1870s, um, the Industrial Revolution was already at a point where, you know, the living conditions were really shitty for a lot of the workers, most of the workers actually. People had already moved largely from uh, the countryside to the cities, they were living in slums, and essentially one of the um, uh, propositions that uh, Morris and the Arts and Crafts movement, and this would translate later into the what the Bohos and all these other German movements were about, but essentially they, they believed that people had a right to live in a beautiful environment, surround themselves with beautiful things, and they were taking this a step beyond, and they were proposing that, you know, people were not supposed to be this kind of like mindless cogs in a machine, so to speak, um, which is a very Marxist way of looking at work, obviously. And obviously, um, William Morris was very, very influ heavily influenced by, by Marx at this point. Uh, but they were proposing that, you know, you couldn't go about your life working, uh, you know, a 50 or 60 uh, hour weekly job in which you were essentially just punching out pieces in a factory, mindlessly going about your job, and that while the Industrial Revolution definitely had its uh, advantages, because obviously uh, the Industrial Revolution, amongst other things, made it possible for people like you and me, who, you know, I don't come from money, and probably you don't come from money either, it made possible to, to people from the lower classes to access things as basic as soap. And... Um, it made it possible and cheaper for them to slowly access some of these commodities that uh, up at, until this point had only been accessible for the for the high class and uh, for the upper classes. So Morris was definitely very into this, but uh, he also thought that you know keeping workers mindlessly creating the same kind of like boring objects uh, was very very dehumanizing. And uh, he proposed that, you know, the, the process of the craft, crafting process, was a very important thing for for humankind. And um, obviously, I, I deeply agree with this. Um, and throughout his connection to the pre-Raphaelites, um, such as Barn Jones and uh, Gabriel Rossetti, um, the architect Philip Webb as well, with whom he designed a red house in Kent, um, 
you know, it, there, there really came to a point where he was appreciating nature and putting nature into his designs in a very ornamentalist way. And as a feminist, for me, this is deeply interesting because um, later in the 20th century, uh, you will see that ornamentalism is taught at us like the beginning of all evil and stuff. But ornamentalism has traditionally been kind of like a very uh, female thing. Um, and the kind of ornamentalism that William Morris was uh, imprinting in his designs, um, where he was using mostly veg vegetal and like uh, floral motifs, that's uh, especially uh, in the late 18th to the 19th centuries, that's a very female world uh, for the longest time female painters had been essentially um been made to paint mostly flowers and still lives of flowers and uh, they'd been quite successful at it um but yeah you would have like uh, girls doing watercolors of flowers and uh, embroidering flowers and of course uh, this is a victorian uh, england so you have to keep in mind that flowers have a very very sexual kind of meaning and it's very interesting from that regard as well to see um not only william morris incorporating that into his artwork but also uh, how much females were um pushed towards uh, working with flowers and how sexual that was in nature. But, you know, going back to our point about ornamentalism and uh, how ornamentalism and textile design is uh, traditionally a very uh, female and a very... You also come to this point of the discussion where it's about uh, lowbrow and highbrow and how art is divided in proper art and then the crafts. So... William Morris, was he's obviously a fantastic artist, and I don't know if you're familiar with his work, but I will um, link some of his stuff down below in the description just for you to see. But um, he was interested in creating these beautiful textiles, these uh, beautiful ornamentalistic backgrounds, and with the Calvin Scott Press, he was so into uh, ornaments in general. And these kind of things, uh, especially the textiles, have long been a female thing. And why one of the reasons why I believe that arts and crafts are, you know, the high arts and low crafts is because most crafts, uh, they began as a female thing. And there's no better way to um, make sure that women won't be able to earn their own money than to make sure that uh, the art, the proper art is only made by men and crafts are... Um, made by women, essentially. So you have a, a Victorian man choosing to do this ornamentalistic textile work, and of course, at, you know, at this point of the um, of the industrial revolution, with the textile industry becoming such a big thing here in England, it's very obvious that this was no longer a female thing. But still, you'd find plenty of females working in textile design, and I think it's this is a quite nice. Uh, genealogy to go through. For example, if you come to someone such as uh, Judy Chicago, who I believe in her work has a very deep connection to the arts and crafts movement, and also obviously to the you know uh, workers' rights, uh, women's rights, and I don't know if you're familiar with Judy Ch Chicago's um, dinner table. It's a fantastic piece of art, and I will also link that down below. But I definitely see um, a very intense and interesting connection between William Morris's uh, floral ornamentalism and Judy Chicago's work in the dinner table, work with embroidery uh, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, another thing that I wanted to touch upon, especially because, um, as you can see, I'm working here in a kind of like arts and crafts, uh, pre-Raphaelite inspired um, print. And I'm using a bunch of flowers, but I'm also going back to the motif of death. And of course, um, Banitas is a theme that has always deeply interested me. But since we are talking about William Morris and the Victorians, I think we have to speak a little bit about how Victorian society dealt with death and how nature and death have been intertwined throughout, in general, the history of the of the Western art. And you know, uh, Victorian people really loved their flowers with their skulls, and you'd find skulls and skeletons all throughout um, Victorian motifs and uh, Victorian decor. And you know, as a goth myself, that's why I love to um, that time period so much, probably. 
but yeah, I just wanted to touch briefly upon that. Um, before we go back to, to William Morris, just to make the point that there's a certain, for me at least, uh, interesting conversation to be had around um, morbid sexuality and morbid death and nature and how these topics um, had so much to do with um, the civilized versus savage Victorian duality, so to speak. So, you know, going back to William Morris, um, as you can see, this uh, piece of work that I'm completing here, it's uh, it's quite a simple um, pattern. It's quite a simple print. Uh, if you guys are interested, um, let me know in the comments down below and I will happily, I can make a video going into detail in terms of like uh, my design rationale for this kind of things or like why am I dividing the space the way I'm dividing it and how I'm going about... Um, balance in the design and all the stuff but yeah um i was trying to channel a little bit of that sinuosity that william morris had in in his designs and of course i have such a long way to go to be able to uh do and create prints as good as his and i was also trying to keep myself within a fairly limited color palette which was not something um of his style he'd usually use two to three main colors and i'm only using one but essentially yeah i just wanted to chat with you guys a little bit about you know what i usually think about when i'm i'm drawing the stuff and i i honestly find it very interesting uh because from the last i believe five to six years to now we've seen uh the first victorian revival since the 80s and with the whole pandemic i think it's only going to to become more and more popular and i wanted to close this um this reflection just by letting you guys know that right now if you wanted to buy a william morris fabric uh, you can go to the liberty web website and you'll you'll find that they are quite fucking expensive so i i think it's you know it's very ironic that a man who wrote such passionate manifestos about how um, minimum wage workers had the right to live surrounded by beautiful things. Uh, you know, he was a brilliant mind and he honestly did so much in terms of like affecting how people were starting to think about designing spaces as, that weren't slums. So I think it's very interesting to to realize that um, his work is now being used uh, by a rather posh company, and don't get me wrong, I love liberty, um, and that most minimum wage workers couldn't, you know, not even dream of affording uh, William Morris' meta of, of fabric. So, yeah, um, if you guys like this design, it's going to be up in my Redbubble store as a few different products, you know, Dube covers. Um, I think I'm also doing phone cases and a few other things. Um, oh, yeah, and I love the, um, the duffel bag, so I'm, I'm definitely doing a duffel bag. So, yeah, uh, please, if you enjoyed this kind of video, uh, just give me a like, hit the subscribe button and the little bell if you've not done that already. And feel free to follow me on the rest of my social media. I will leave that linked somewhere around here. And yeah, please let me know in the comments down below what kind of stuff would you like me to hear discussing next, um, what kind of things you guys are interested in me doing with the channel. And yeah, um, hopefully I will be uploading quite a bit more. I hope you guys are having a lovely week. And you know, stay safe and stay